Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, press conference that should mark the su successful uh, vote uh, uh, ending the, or preparing the end of the biannual clock change. Uh, may I uh, first of all um, welcome uh, all uh, the members of the parliament here uh, in, the, in the panel um, uh, Mrs. Kumpula uh, Natri from SND, uh, Mrs. Schreier uh, Pirik uh, from EPP, Mrs. Anna Zaborska, uh, Mrs. Hautala, Vice President of, uh, of the, the Parliament, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kilonen. Uh, we, yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm looking for uh, Angelika Niebler who will join us in a few moments, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Andrzej Grzyb uh, and uh, uh, Mrs. Meissner. Uh, they will also have a moment uh, to speak and uh, to address you. Uh, we have come a long way in ending the biannual uh, clock change. Years of negotiations led to the resolution of the February the 8th, uh, 2018, uh, whereby the European Parliament uh, called on the Commission to conduct a thorough assessment of the current uh, Summertime Arrangements Directive and, if necessary, uh, to come up with a proposal for its revision. <clears throat> Uh, Parliament quoted scientific studies indicated negative acts, uh, indicating negative effects on human health and a number of concerns expressed by citizens' initiatives. Then in summer 2018, a record-breaking 4,6 million Europeans participated in the public consultation held by the Commission. 84% of respondents were in favour of ending seasonal clock changes. Also, a number of citizens' initiatives have uh, highlighted public concerns regards uh, the biannual clock change, and some member states have already expressed their preferences to discontinue the application of such summertime arrangements. Uh, in the present time, um, we, uh, we would like to inform you that the member states are to notify the Commission by April 1st, 2020, at latest, um, whether they wish to choose the standard time or the winter time. Member states may still apply seasonal change uh, of their standard time or times in 2021, provided that they do so at 1 o'clock a.m. coordinated universal time on the last Sunday uh, in October of uh, that year. Um, for other details of what we have voted uh, successfully for, um, we can leave uh, eventually to questions and I would like to uh, give gradually uh, floor to uh, all of uh, the members that are here in the panel. Those of you who follow us, who have followed the previous um, press conferences, you will see that uh, the, this panel changes uh, slightly because we try to uh, show that we represent about uh, 70 members who uh, were at the beginning of, uh, of this successful story in the European Parliament, successful story which uh, began by uh, commissions uh, reactions that this uh, this idea is a minor one and that the commission is only about big things uh, to uh, last year's uh, report on uh, state of the union where uh, the president Jean-Claude Juncker declared that uh, the biannual clock arrangement is a big thing that the commission needs to address. Uh, let me, uh, let me begin without any um, uh, intended order by uh, Mrs. Zaborska, who is uh, for, for the first time in this panel at the press conference. You have a floor. Uh, 
Yeah. Is it okay that uh, that Mrs. Zaborska speaks Slovak? There is plenty of interpretation. Okay. So, uh, dobrý deň, dámy a páni. Práve včera mi napísal jeden slovenský občan, ktorý navrhol, aby moja krajina Slovensko prijala natrvalo čas, ktorý by bol presne uprostred letným a zimným časom. Je škoda, že to nie je možné, ale priznám sa, že by to bolo riešenie, ktoré by sa možno páčilo viacerým. Uh, uh, the would point out, there is no Slovak interpretation available for this meeting. It wasn't requested. Okay. Môžem ešte raz? No, there is no... no. Interpretation is not available for Slovak. No, no Slovak interpretation is available. Try 12. No Slovak interpretation. So what? Can you hear the English booth? Can you hear us speaking? Uh, alors, uh, <laughs> je commence uh, en français, excusez-moi. Alors, uh, I'll do this in French then, my apologies. Yesterday, there was a Slovak citizen who suggested that my country, Slovakia, should... Uh, adopt summer and winter time uh, in the intervening period, but that's not possible, of course, because we need to have harmonization across the various member states. But what I wanted to underscore is that today's decision proves that the European Parliament, and by extension the European Union, has taken into account and has taken seriously the consultation of European citizens. Uh, a lot of citizens, millions of citizens, have forced the Commission's hand and have prompted the Commission to take into account the arguments that were put forward by the European Parliament. I'm very pleased uh, to see that this was now uh, wrapped up during this term in office. Our working party has worked very hard throughout this legislature and I feared that if we didn't finish off some of the work during this term in office, we would uh, have had to start from scratch during the next term. So I'd like to congratulate the chairman of our working party and I'd like to congratulate my colleagues too on what was excellent cooperation. Floor, uh, to other speakers, may I just excuse uh, Mrs. Ulfskog, the, the reporter. Uh, unfortunately, she, she didn't have time to join us. Obviously, she was invited. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kumpula Natri. May I ask you for your intervention? Thank you, and I also want to thank the Transportation Committee and then also the rapporteur, Ulf Skuk, who in her work really uh, took floor everyone as there were some uh, uh, differentiating opinions in the parliament, and she really took everyone on board and listened to all possible sources of information during the preparation. Uh, I come from Finland, and um, in, in our country, this uh, question has been on the top on the agenda. As the Finnish people were ready to stop changing the clock and then found out that they cannot do it anymore because there is one directive that coordinates the date when you change the time. And it's still unclear for some uh, people that member state may choose which time zone it wants to be. So uh, we see in the map that uh, Spain is in the same uh, time zone with uh, Germany and, and France, uh, whereas it should be on the map with the uh, Portuguese time zone. So now we have the proposal for the Commission and then now the Parliament opinion also that uh, we do not make a difference on the 
powers of uh, national states to me member states to choose the time zone. But then what we wanted, we wanted to coordination as much as possible. I myself was trying to also involve the idea that the two neighboring states should not have the difference of two hours. And that was also the worry of some people who were not so eager to stop the changes that some uh, um, hustling might happen on the time when you change. But I must say that I do believe in the member states now, and I be do believe in the member states in 2020, that they can coordinate as they can coordinate today, so that no, not very odd solutions will be there. I was the shadow rapporteur in the uh, energy committee, and on the energy was one reason that with the, this idea, why to start changing the clock twice a year, came from the energy saving reasons. And the recent uh, uh, statistics and information, we see that it is very tiny. It's much more what we have uh, uh, reached now with the digitalization and new modern me methods that we can do much more savings in the energy than uh, sw switching the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have to be brief in our statements because we have only a limited time. Um, uh, Mrs. Kilonen. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, dear colleagues and uh, our guests. Uh, it's an important day, especially for people in our member states who have been very active with this time-changing issue. And uh, there, there has been many colleagues and uh, many member states also who have said that you should do something else than this kind of minority issues, legislation or directive cases. And I think this is more than important because people are very interested about this, this special issue. This is easy to understand. This is easy to act. And uh, I'm happy that we are in this position and in, in this situation, that people can also feel that they have been listened out with this, with this case, which seems to be very important for them. And we'll see. I wait for coordination and for a coordinated uh, solution for time changes, because I don't want to see whole mess 2021. And I think we can do it and we can do it together. So we will continue our job, I think, until the end. And we see, we see the date 2021 when this seasonal time changes is really ended. Thank you. Thank you, Andrzej Grzyb. Thank you, President. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I continue in my mother language and Polish language. Uh, also, please uh, take your headphones. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I would like to thank all the colleagues from the working group. That's a, a very good result. Thank you for this. We have been working together as a working group and today we can make change happen. 410 MEPs have supported the change to the directive. We will discontinue the seasonal biannual changes. We need to wait till spring 2021, but it is very important. Now, what was our motivation? The voice of the citizens who wanted to discontinue this change. Our Finnish colleagues have mentioned that uh, there has been a lot of public support for that initiative in Finland, also in Poland, the Polish Parliament has even started a similar uh, legislative initiative. M my party, which belongs to the EPP family, family has come forward with such an initiative. It uh, had been stopped because back then we had realized that the directive would need to be changed. This is happening now. The involvement and engagement of the citizens in public consultations is uh, unprecedented. This active approach on the part of our citizens is very telling. We have also been in touch with many NGOs. 
which were in favor of this initiative and which pointed to many inconveniences and uh, disadvantages of the seasonal time change. Children suffer, elderly people suffer, are struggling to adapt to those seasonal time changes. All this matters. The amendments to the directive will take into account the necessary coordination in between the member states. Uh, everything that is linked in with the transport and logistics will be taken into account. Thanks a lot to our chair, and I would like to mention Herbert Royal, who started this work uh, in the working group. And now he is uh, in Germany, in Westphalia, but his name should be mentioned here. I don't have a hammer, so uh, <laughs> I don't have an instrument to uh, to make sure that uh, the one minute is, is, is uh, really respected. Uh, so, uh, Mrs. Schreier-Pirik. Thank you very much, Chair. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased uh, to have been part of uh, this uh, working party so that we could bring to an end this uh, business of clock changing, which doesn't really matter all that much. This is a, a historic moment in Parliament. We didn't listen to large companies or multinationals, but we simply listened to mothers with young children, to the elderly. We listened to people and their biorhythm. Last year, we had a Nobel Prize winner who made uh, the point of biorhythm too. But, of course, we're not out of the woods yet. We'll have to see how member states coordinate matters between themselves because they're responsible for implementing this. And hopefully it's not going to be an entire patchwork in the EU and uh, so that in a couple of years' time we can say that y the EU is a unit, we have three different time zones, but that we stick to those. And then hopefully in two years' time, when we have a new parliament, uh, I hope we all get re-elected, especially the women, because there's a, a large number of women here. But uh, I'm very pleased that we managed to uh, get this uh, silly business off the table. Hautala, Vice President of the Parliament. Yeah, thank you very much, Pavel. Um, it's no doubt that you have been really uh, driving this for many years, and it's only correct that you are chairing this press conference. Um, I'd also like to thank the Finnish government. I'm from the opposition, so this is very rare for me to say that the Finnish government was absolutely key in bringing this issue to the Council, because there was a popular initiative in Finland uh, which called for uh, uh, deleting or eradicating the, the biannual change. Uh, and uh, our Minister for, for Transport, Anne Berner, she really uh, listened to the Parliament, which decided that this is a matter that should be taken to the EU. So um, let's see. Um, the Commission actually was quite smart because it gave the legislative proposal and, and uh, uh, after the Parliament has now said its uh, view, then uh, the ball is with the, in the court of the Council. And this will be a real test for the Council to see how they can actually coordinate the work on behalf of the citizens. Thank you very much. Angelika Nibla. Yeah, um, vielen Dank, Pavel. Thank you, Havel. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, I'm delighted with the results of today's vote. The abolition of the clock going back was adopted with an overwhelming majority. The Parliament has been fighting for this many, for many years now. We started talking about it back at the beginning of this period of Parliament. We set up the working group headed up by Pavel. I'd like to thank you, Pavel, for that. And we kept hammering away at this in all the different committees and working groups using all the powers at our disposal. We gradually stepped up pressure against the Commission, forcing the Commission to come forward with a proposal. So I think we can be proud of what we've achieved. I'm delighted. This is something of a landmark for the work of the European Parliament. And we all took note of what our constituents back at home were asking for. We had a uh, an opinion poll back on this in Bavaria, and support was overwhelming. So what's going I'm delighted. And this means that following Scandinavian countries, all the various different EU countries can now move towards coordinating the changes so as to avoid any chaos. And talking about chaos, I can't neglect mentioning Brexit which I hope will come off smoothly. But anyway, 2021 is the end date for bringing about this important change for our citizens. Oh, my 
Thank you. Our last speaker is Ms. Meiss. Doch jetzt gleich auf Deutsch weiter. Ja, ich bin I'll continue in German as well. I've been a member of the Transport Committee for 10 years, and for all that time, I've been fighting hard to bring an end to the change, the clock going back. There are two main reasons for this. We wanted to save energy. So right now we save energy in the evening, but we use more energy in the morning, so it's a zero-sum game. Another good reason is to reduce the number of road traffic accidents. There may be more accidents in the evening. Sorry, there are less accidents in the evening, but more in the morning, and that involves a high proportion of young children on the way to school. For similar reasons, China and Russia have also done away with the change of clocks. So surely we're just as smart as they are. So, uh, experts, one, uh, one expert was given a, a worldwide prize for having identified the effect of changing the clock on human beings. When this whole practice first started, back then, two member states had the powers to choose different times. But even then, they chose to go for a single uniform time to avoid confusion. In Switzerland, they had uh, a, uh, a referendum. 90% of the population didn't want to go for the new system, but Switzerland insisted it was important to have the same time as other countries. So this f proves that there was a clear road to a good solution, and I just hope now the Council will behave responsibly in moving forward and implementing this change. And now we have uh, several minutes for several questions, if there are any. If, if there are no questions, uh, Alice Klar, uh, I would like to, uh, oh, there is, there is one. You, you save the stage. Just a precision, but I've probably misunderstood. Just a clarification, but maybe I've misunderstood. At the start, you said that member states, by the first of April 2019, would have to indicate to the Commission. It, it, it's, it's not 2019 then. 2020. 2020. Okay. And what is the Commission's role then? In Council, you need harmonization. Does the Commission steer that harmonization to some extent? Do they monitor, supervise certain decisions or not? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, obviously, co the Commission will be involved, but it's not a, a process of harmonization. It's only a control mechanism under the auspices of uh, the Commission that uh, the uh, individual decisions of member states uh, make sense and do not jeopardize the good functioning of the internal market. Merci. Thank you. If there are no other questions, I would like to thank all uh, all my colleagues in the panel, uh, everybody from the, from the working group of 70 uh, members, and also to our assistants uh, who helped us uh, on this uh, long journey to today's vote. Thank you for the attendance.